All right, so I start. I decided to start on the 372 clone saw first out of those three saws. I pulled out of the boxes. I just was really probably the most excited about this one just because I, I've never even ran a 372, so I've, and I've always been wanting to. So it, it came together really easy. I'm happy with everything I saw in the kit. There was, you know, the usual stuff like small paint chips in the uh, crankcase. And the bearings, although they felt really good, you know, you could tell I just didn't take a chance. So I washed those out with WD-40. The seals were already pre-installed. Uh, they look like good seals. And I popped the case halves in the oven, 250. Nope, that's no problem for the seals. And uh, it went together really easy. The, you know, the last case half went about three quarters down, but if you use the case bolts really, you know, in a, in a safe way, it's no problem. I've, I've never had any problems with that. I just gotta be careful about it. Um, the, let's talk about the timing numbers. Exhaust is 100. This is no base gasket, by the way. Exhaust is 100, blow down is 25, and intake is 72. So I'm thinking about actually getting this cylinder machined. I don't have a lathe, but I got some friends that can help me do it. That way, that'll help that intake, you know, a good bit, and it'll, you know, lower the exhaust roof, but I'm actually wanting to run a little bit less than 100, so I will have to do some, some grinding there. Which, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be grinding on the cylinder anyways. But I've never had a, a cylinder machine, so I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, usually, they, the intake was already too much. And if I machined it, you know, I'm going to have to, it's going to be too much. So I'd have to do some epoxy or something. So this seems like it'll be a good candidate for machine work, which will be exciting. Uh, the only problem, I, or the only thing I don't like about this and it might break in as the the brake. It is really, takes a lot of force to pull this thing back. Let me show you if I can do it kind of one-handed. So here it is tripping, it's very loud. Sorry, I should have given you a headphone warning. And this thing, I mean, it's it's not horrible, but it's not good, it's pretty a little too stiff for me. So I'm thinking about changing the spring out to maybe an OEM spring. That's where the flag spring is. Might give that a shot. One other thing I forgot to mention was I went ahead and replaced the starter rope. Uh, I, I like to use this stuff. It's pretty cheap for a roll of it. Um, you can get it from a, diff a bunch of different places. I think maybe I got this from HL uh, Pro Parts. Surprisingly cheap for a roll of it, 100 feet. I went ahead and replaced it. It was short. It, it, you could start the saw with it. It was definitely long enough to crank the saw, but I don't like to be at the end of the rope you know, hitting against the end of the rope. I just feel like that's tough on the starter parts. So I went ahead and replaced it. Uh, my 440 kit saw the, the rope lasted about a year. So I knew I was gonna be, you know, replacing this rope fairly soon anyways. So I went ahead and did that. But overall, I'm, I'm real happy with it. Seems pretty high quality. And uh, we'll start at the 170 next. We'll be doing both these saws at the same time because that'll take a while to I gotta ship that cylinder off to get machined. And uh, so the next project is getting that 170 cleaned up. It is filthy. When I, every time I buy, buy a saw like that, I'm surprised at how long it takes to get clean. So we'll be doing that. I'll show you the before and after. It'll be a you know pretty quick video. I won't bore you with cleaning it, but uh, that's coming up next. So thanks for watching. Hope you're having a good new year.